It's hard to remember why something with a low specific heat actually heats up faster than something with a high specific heat. So I'm going to show you why this is true. Specific heat, denoted by lowercase c, is the amount of heat, measured either in calories or joules, that one gram of substance must absorb in order to increase its temperature by one degree Celsius. In this video, we're going to be using the units of joules per gram per degree Celsius. We'll also be using a very familiar formula, the heat capacity formula, to help demonstrate specific heat, where Q is the internal energy of a substance or object measured in joules, M is the mass of a substance or object measured in grams, C is the specific heat, and delta T is the change in temperature of the substance or object measured in degrees Celsius. So to demonstrate what specific heat is, suppose we have one gram of silver and one gram of gold. The specific heat of silver is 0.237 joules per gram per degree Celsius, and the specific heat of gold is 0.129 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Now we're going to apply heat to each of these masses and watch the temperature change. Notice that every time silver absorbs 0.237 joules of heat energy, it increases by 1 degree Celsius. And the same for gold, but it only requires 0.129 joules of heat energy to increase by 1 degree Celsius. Now notice both are at 3 degrees Celsius, but the silver had to absorb a lot more energy than the gold did in order to increase the same amount of degrees. Using the heat capacity formula, we can also see that when we have two substances of same mass that increase by the same number of degrees Celsius, that the substance with the higher specific heat will have to absorb more heat energy before it increases in temperature. This means specific heat and internal energy are directly related. Now, to demonstrate which mass will heat up faster, suppose we have the same two one gram masses of silver and gold, and for the sake of ease, we're gonna round the specific heat of silver to 0.2 and the specific heat of gold to 0.1. And we're gonna apply the same amount of energy to each of the masses and watch the temperature change. Notice that as each mass absorbs 0.1 joules of energy, only the gold increases by one degree Celsius. The silver does not. As they absorb another 0.1 joules of energy, the gold increases by another degree Celsius. And finally, because silver has a total of 0.2 joules of energy, it finally increases by one degree Celsius. So as they absorb another 0.1 joules of energy, the gold increases by another degree Celsius, but the silver does not and then absorbing another 0.1 joules of energy, the gold increases by yet another degree Celsius, and the silver, because now it has 0.2 more joules of energy, it increases by another degree Celsius. So you can see, even though they both absorb the same amount of energy, the gold with a lower heat capacity increased by four degrees Celsius, whereas the silver with the higher heat capacity only increased two degrees Celsius. The gold heated up faster, meaning the lower the heat capacity, the faster something will heat up. So back to the heat capacity formula. Here we can see that when we have two substances of same mass that absorb the same amount of energy, the greater the specific heat of the substance, the lower the temperature change will be, meaning a substance that has a high specific heat will take longer to heat up. Specific heat and temperature change are inversely related. To further demonstrate, suppose we have the same one gram masses of silver and gold, and suppose we want to heat both up to four degrees Celsius. Because silver has a higher specific heat, it would have to absorb twice the amount of energy as gold in order to heat up by the same amount of degrees Celsius. Silver has to absorb 0.2 joules of energy before it increases its temperature by one degree Celsius, whereas gold only has to absorb 0.1 joule of energy before it increases its temperature by one degree Celsius. So you can see it's twice the amount of energy 
in silver in order to increase its temperature by the same amount of degrees as gold. Now suppose we have one gram of silver and five grams of silver. And because they're both silver, they both have a specific heat of 0 0.237 joules per gram per degree Celsius. And suppose we want to increase the temperature of both masses by three degrees Celsius. Well, as each mass absorbs 0 0.237 joules of heat energy, they will increase by one degree Celsius. However, look at the larger mass. There's so much more space, and since heat dissipates throughout, it will lessen the effect of the temperature change. So in this case, the five grams of silver would have to absorb five times the amount of heat before increasing entirely by three degrees Celsius. So back to the specific heat capacity formula, you can now see that if two masses have the same specific heat, and if you want them to increase by the same number of degrees Celsius, the greater mass will have to absorb a greater amount of heat before it increases by the same number of degrees Celsius as the smaller mass. It's the same idea when it comes to a decrease in temperature. The larger mass would have to lose a lot more internal energy before decreasing its temperature by the same amount of degrees Celsius as the smaller mass. As you can see, after losing 3 degrees Celsius, the 5 gram mass still has a lot of internal energy to release before it reaches 0 degrees Celsius like the 1 gram mass. Now a little bit about specific heat of the different phases of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Solids tend to have high specific heats, while gases tend to have low specific heats. And remember, specific heat and change in temperature are inversely related. So the higher the specific heat, the lower the temperature change will be. Why is this? Well, consider if we were to sample the same volume of solid, liquid, and gas, you'd see that solids have more atoms or molecules per unit volume than gases do. This means there's more mass per any unit volume of solid than there is gas, meaning it has the highest mass and therefore requires the most energy to change in temperature. Showing that mass and internal energy are directly related. The greater the mass, the greater the internal energy required to change the temperature. And further showing that mass and change in temperature are inversely related. Again, the greater the mass, be less of a change in temperature. To finally sum it all up, the lower the specific heat, the faster something will heat up. Or you can say, the higher the specific heat, the more time it'll take to heat something up. Simple as that. There's one major exception to our specific heat discussion, and that's water. But that'll be talked about in our special properties of water video.